pretty well there. Butt it up against the barrel. And uh, so that's where we want to be. So that's a good snug fit. Flip it over, we can see this here. So we did a pretty good job inletting the, the lock plate around there. So now when you inlet the, the guts uh, for the lock, you want to be really careful when you're doing it and you don't want to pry your chisels um, because if, you, if, you, if you're prying on them, you're going to smash your edge. chisels and, and scoop it out instead of prying on it the best you can. Every once in a while you're gonna have to pry a little bit just pay attention to where the stem of your chisel is so you don't um, get against your edge there and cause it to cave in. So next up is inletting all the all the guts. Okay so after you have your lock plate in I like to take my pencil here and just kind of trace a, a circle right here where your tumbler goes and then I reach in here and just put little marks where these holes are because that's where your uh, your bridle layout is and uh, so now you can pull it back out of there and now you can see my marks here where uh, where I'm going to place the bridle so I'm going to take this bridle here first you got to figure out if you're new to it you got to figure out how the bridle goes back in there so if you put the tumbler in uh, this center hole is where you put it through this pin right here. If I can figure out how to get it. There it goes. Alright, so so here's our, our top hole and here's our bottom hole right here. So I'm going to pull this back off. If you flip the lock over, that's how it's going to go in. It's like that. So I'm going to take the bridle back out. I'm going to flip it over. And your little hole right here in the middle of your bridle, it goes in the center of your big circle here that you did. Your other hole up here will go on this mark right here. And then this hole up here will go on this mark here. So you just line your, line your spots up here the best you can. Oop, I'm sorry. Uh, this hole here goes on this bottom mark here. All right, and then I like to hold it down with a with a finger, and then trace this puppy out the best I can. You don't have to be right up against that bridle. Uh, you can you can be off of it just a little bit with your with your pencil, um, because uh, it's actually better to take a little bit of extra wood off, so that way it gives it a gives your parts a little bit more room to wiggle around. You don't want them sloppy in there, but you want them you want them to where they'll move around and function, especially when you're out hunting and your and your stock swells uh, when it's raining or something like that. You don't want that stock to swell up around your parts and bind them to where you where your lock won't function. All right, so we're going to inlet the bridle first, and then uh, kind of a one part at a time deal. And it actually helps to overlap your cuts like that, and so that way it chips out easier. In the inside it helps it come out of there a little bit easier be careful tapping along the bottom there because you don't have much wood underneath your chisel there and you can split out the bottom of your stock if you're not careful try to go as straight down as possible you don't want to be angling in too much because you can, uh, because then your bridle will still be hitting by the time you get to the bottom. So just try to stay straight up and down as you can when you peck it. And work it all the way down. All right, so there's our bridle layout right there.
you can take a I like to take a drill I like to drill down the middle here where my where my uh, tumbler is going to go the best I can I'm going to tighten this up a little bit and these are just store bought bits here um, in the 18th century they would have a lot of their bits would have been uh, handmade bits and they were they were made a little bit different and they were made in a way to where you could hand drill them like this and um, when you hand drill them they would um, they would go right through metal um, and these modern bits when you're drilling with by hand a lot of times right when the drill bits about to punch through it'll hang up right there and you have to take a sprue and uh, and punch your hole on out and then finish drilling so that's probably what we're gonna have to do just because I don't have any I don't have any 18th century bits with me alright so now we're gonna take all this excess wood out of here doesn't have to be super neat because all this is going to be covered up the main thing is is you just want all your parts to fit and you want them to fit good and you want them to have enough plenty enough room to move around in there and plenty enough room to uh, to where if that stock ever expands or shrinks it'll uh all your parts will still function properly that's the main thing you're after i've seen some of them where they you can tell where each part was inlet individually and it was quite a sight to see really it looks like it was almost like a machine did it because they spent so much time for every little part and then you see others that looked like they were just hogged out with a tomahawk basically and but um really just all depended on the builder i guess all right we're gonna get this to go on down until the bridle sits down where it needs to go Okay, our bridle is in. Um, doesn't look too bad. I'm going to take it back out of there. And uh, I kind of assemble the lock back together as I go. So I'm going to put the fly back in it. Uh, put the tumbler in, then put your fly back in. Uh, not every fly has a... Uh, yeah, there. Not every fly has a, has a leg on it like this. If they have legs on them like that, uh, it makes it so much easier just because there's no wrong way to put it in but that. Um, others just have a hole and there's actually a stem that rises up and you and you put the you, you put it on over that stem. But one bevel is different than the other bevel on the fly. And uh, so sometimes you can get it flipped backwards and you don't know if it's if it's on wrong or not until you get the lock fully assembled. And you try to work and then the and then it, nothing works um so then that tells you that your fly is on backwards um but on these there's no mistake uh so now we're going to put the bridle back on go ahead and put this uh little bolt back in here just to help hold that bridle in place and then you just want to make sure that see so your tumbler will move on you uh so you just want to kind of angle it down just a little bit like that to where about where the mainspring would be if the mainspring was let off. Um, so now I'm going to flip it over, and uh, first off, we're going to we're going to put some uh, soot on this thing before we put it in there, and uh, that'll tell us uh, where that tumbler is hitting at, so we know right where to take the wood off. All right, so now I'm going to angle that down just a little bit. I'm going to blacken all this. All right, so then when you go to put it in here, the bridle will fit, but the tumbler won't. So now you just give it light pecks. You don't want to hit it too hard. And now you can see right there where the tumbler is hitting. So now we're going to take we're going to take some chisels here. We're going to chisel that part out of there. I'm going to go a little bit lower because it looks like that tumbler's rised up just a little more than it should be. Right through here. You don't want to take off more than you need to at first. 
There she goes. She's, she's wanting to go. All right, so we're hitting up here. So now we're going to take this bit of wood out of here. Now we're hitting our uh, little bolt head right there is hitting. So what I like to do for them is you can drill them. Uh, but what I do is I use a really tight, really tight gouge here. And uh, I just give it a few pecks there and then go to the other side. Give it a few pecks and then you can go to one side. And then you can just twist it. Twist your chisel a little bit. It'll pop it right out of there. So now we'll place it back in again. Still hitting up there a little bit, looks like. Okay. So we're hitting down here, so we gotta take this off. Just take your time. Alright, so now our other screw head right there is hitting, so take this and punch that spot out. anywhere it's black you just want to take that spot off there's no need to take anything else off that's not black there she goes now I'm still hitting along the bottom and that's okay we'll get that little bit of wood out and then that'll fit and then the next step is your uh, is your sear and your sear spring and mainspring. You do all those at the same time. And uh, it's just a lot of chiseling from here on out, but we're getting close. After you got your parts reassembled and everything, you put it back up here, and the mainspring and your sear is going to hold it up. So you just look over the top, and you line it up with your mortise the best you can from over the top. And it uh, doesn't have to be spot on right now, but pretty close, as close as you can get it. I'm going to put a mark right here where the where the sear is on the back side of the sear. So right there is where my sear is going to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to change drill bits here. Actually, no, I'm going to drill it with this one. Uh, so you want to drill a hole here. You don't have to drill it. You can also chisel it out. Um, for me, it's just easier to if I drill it. So. And then I come back later and I and I chisel it out. I kind of chisel it into a square, uh, a square shape instead of round, and it just gives that sear a little more room in there. And also your trigger, it gives them a little bit more room to wiggle around, so that way nothing binds up on you. Sometimes it seems like if you just have a a small hole here where your sear is sitting, it'll your sear will actually hit and rub, and uh, and your trigger can't push the push the sear up enough sometimes. So we're just going to drill a hole here first, and then we're going to chisel it out in a little bit. All right. And what you can do also is you can you can take a uh, uh, just some some type of measuring device, whatever you have, and put it up there and see how deep you got to go. So on this one, it's about seven eighths of an inch. Um, and so what you can do next is uh, you can you can measure this. To seven eighths of an inch and you can put a piece of tape on it or or whatever you got to do um, so right here I know it's how deep that sears got to be so I'm gonna put it back in here now I'm almost deep enough I'm gonna go just a little bit deeper right there you want you don't want to go too deep but you want to go deep enough where your uh, the sears not going to rub on the bottom of your hole there all right so next up is you're going to take your uh, take your lock put it back in here again so now our sear is sitting in that hole pretty good and uh but the uh the horizontal piece um of your of your sear uh where it where it bends to a 90 degree it's going to be hitting your sear spring is going to be hitting and your main spring is still hitting here so what we're going to do is put it back in here where you can just kind of kind of line it up again and the whole lock's got to shift forward a little bit 
So I'm going to put a mark right here at the end of the mainspring. And I'm going to know that I got a I got a cheap forward from that about a sixteenth of an inch at least to get it to sit up there where it's supposed to go. All right, and then I'm just going to look at the spring here, and I can see that most every mainspring has a bow in the bottom of it, just a not much, but just a little bit. So right here is the end of my mainspring. So that spring comes in here like this. And it's just got a tiny bit of a bow to it. So I'm going to put a little bit of a bow in here. And I'm going to cheat my mark forward just a little bit. About 3 30 seconds or so. Give that mainspring a little bit more room to shift forward. And to move around as well. Alright, so next up is taking that wood out of there for your mainspring. Once again, you want to be careful here, and pretty light pecs. You don't want to you don't want to beat on it because you can sure split the bottom of your stock out. Learn that the hard way. If you do split it out, you can you can glue it back, and if you have to, you can put pins in it to help hold it again. But it's a uh, boy, it's sure a, it's sure a disgusting feeling when it happens. There was one time uh, I didn't have the stock braced up very good, and uh, I had the stock completely done, and uh, I was just putting parts back together to make sure everything was going to fit one last time before I stained and finished the stock, and I was putting the trigger guard in, and I didn't have the wrist braced up, and when I picked the trigger guard, it, it snapped the wrist, and um, that's a lot of work to go through. For that to happen and so I thought about fixing it but the best thing to do in that case when it's in the wrist like that is uh is to just start over especially if you're the one building it especially if it's for a customer you don't want you don't want to have hidden secrets in the gun that could get someone hurt for sure all right and then all that wood's going to come out of there. So I'm going to score a line down through here. Alrighty. Now we'll get all that wood out of there. So the mainspring will start sitting down in there. And then we'll inlet the, uh, where the leg of the, or where the bar of the uh, sear goes we'll inlet that down and we'll inlet where the where the spring right here goes as well and so that way everything sits down properly once that is all in um, then you can put the cock back on and um, you can start uh, pulling it back just a little bit you want to you want to blacken your mainspring up a, a little bit and then when you pull the cock back you'll have blackness up here on the on the top edge of your mainspring where your mainspring is rising up and hitting and you just keep taking little bits of wood at a time until uh, until it'll go completely to full cock and two solid clicks, uh, half cock and full cock. And uh, and then when you take it back out, you don't want to see any signs of black in there. So we'll continue with that. All right, we're gonna start shaping around the the lock plate here, so that way we can put the cock back on. And uh, once the cock's on, then we can uh, we can kind of work that just a little bit to make sure that everything's gonna gonna go where it should. And, and the mainspring, we can see where the mainspring's gonna hit. So we're gonna go ahead and take some wood off the top here. If I can get it started. All right, there's that. Do the other side. The wrist you want to leave. You want to leave as much meat on the wrist for right now as you as you can, uh, just because you're going to do you're going to be doing a lot of uh, beating around and stuff like that on the butt plate when you're inletting it, and uh, and also when you're taking all this excess wood off with chisels, um, you're going to be hitting this thing a lot. Um, so you want you want to leave all that meat on there for now, and uh, 
when you get the butt plate on and get this, uh, get the butt itself shaped, then you can start taking wood off the wrist as you go. You just don't want to get in a hurry on the wrist right now because it'll, uh, the more wood you take off of it, the higher chance of you breaking something is. All right, so there it's shaped around the tang the way it's supposed to, and um, and then next step will be in letting the butt plate and, uh, and shaping the butt.